Hi, this is Marty Smith, and I'm going to be making a training video for PokerSwap.com. Um, this video today is, is going to be a little bit different to the ones we've done before, in that the, the footage that you're going to be watching isn't actually of me playing, or, or any of the other instructors for that matter. Um, this is a video that's been sent in by one of our members, uh, the idea being that, that I'm going to watch it back, and um, maybe see if I can find any leaks or, or offer some kind of constructive criticism on, on how the guy plays. Although, to, to be honest, that's it's not going to be easy. I've already, I've already watched back the video just to take notes down on some of the hands and stuff. And um guy actually seems to play pretty well. Uh, <laughs> certainly nothing I disagree with strongly. You know, I mean, I'm sure this guy's quite a decent winner at this level. Um, but nevertheless, there are a few things that I might have done differently. Uh, which might give him and, and maybe the rest of you something to think about. And uh, also a lot of hands that he plays well, which are, which are just interesting hands and, and maybe help to illustrate. Uh, so important points in, in PLO so um, hopefully it's going to be of some use to us anyway um, I'm going to call it I'm going to be referring to this guy as, as Jay Cage uh, because I think that's his, his name on the poker squad form as you can see he's, he's blacked out his name on, on full tilt here so he wants to remain anonymous uh, and also I'm going to be calling this table in the top left table 1 table 2 top right Table three, bottom left, and table four down here in bottom right. Uh, just so it's easy for you to keep track of what table I'm actually talking about. I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to pause it and uh, speak more about some of the hands and fast forward it whenever there's not much happening and stuff. But uh, there is a hand that I want to talk about right here at the start of the video. Um, on table two, uh, ace queen jack four, uh, none hearts. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a standard standard enough uh, pre flop raise. Um, Called by the guy on the button. Uh, looks like a, a pretty safe flop to the continuation bet. It's unlikely to, to have hit our opponent. I'll go ahead and bet four dollars. And this is where it gets tricky. I'm not really sure how I would proceed after this. Uh, our opponent chooses the, the three bet. Um, almost it's almost a min race. Uh, we bet four dollars. He's made it just over ten. Not really sure what to make of this. Um, you know, you, could, you certainly can make a case for four bet. I'm not. Uh, the problem is it's kind of hard for us to represent a really a really strong hand on that kind of flop. I did say it was quite a safe bet, the continuation bet, but but um you know once we could re-raise, if we we're re-raising again, we're we're trying to get the impression of, of a, you know of having a lot of strength. Uh, and like I say, it's not a great flop for us to have connected with. Uh, really hard, you know, it may may look like a bluff if we if we four bet here. Uh, but at the end of the day, I suppose it's it's, it's pretty simple if, if we four bet and. Uh, I think his raise to ten ten dollars either means he has a very big hand or absolutely nothing. Um, and if it's absolutely nothing, then of course the four bet's going to go through. If he has a big hand, then we're going to find out about it, and uh, that'll be the end of the pot. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if I would go ahead and four bet here, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to give up the the pot so easily. Uh, you know, if you pass every time someone three bets you in the flop. Uh, such a small amount, you're leaving yourself open to a lot of cheap bluffs in, in the future. You're going to end up getting pushed around a little bit. So, yeah, maybe all things considered, it, it is the correct play to, to stick a four bet in here and see how he likes the see how he likes the sand after that. And uh, that's what our guy Jay Cage chooses to do. He raises to twenty-five dollars, decent enough size raise. Unfortunately, our opponent chooses the call, and um, once that happens, I think. There's nothing else to do but check pass here. Um, regardless of what his hand is, if he if he likes his hand enough to call a four bet on the flop, it's it's pretty unlikely that uh, he's going to throw it away. Um, if we fire another bullet here on that that kind of a turn, it's not that dangerous a card really. Uh, you know, if he had a two, uh, then there's no way he's going to pass now for the for the last forty. If he has a like an overpair of flush draw, um, even if his hands that weak, he's still probably going to call now. And uh, if he had a straight draw and a flush draw, then he's just got there with the six. So it's it's uh, I think the only uh, option left for is just the is the check pass now. And uh, yeah, that's what happens. I'm just going to wind the video on um, another bit. There's nothing happens for a couple of minutes. Okay, there's another few hands um, that we play here. Uh, Oh, fairly standard to be honest. Raising table four with eighty eight Jack Queen. Um it's not the best hand in the world, but it's certainly nothing wrong with bringing it in for a race when no one's acted before you. And table one here, yes two seven seven. Uh on the big blind we've got the 
uh, see the flop for free. Flop bottom set. JK chooses the bet out here. Um, yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with that either. Table four with the queen, uh, queen jack idiot. Be nothing wrong with betting that flop. I don't think There's nothing wrong with checking it either. You have position on the guy and you get to see how he acts on the turn. Uh, he does check his turn as you can see, and um, we're able to take the pot down with a bet on on the turn. Table two here, uh, king king three four. Um, you know, uh, if kings are out, certainly not a bad hand. It's certainly worth seeing a flop with, with kings in Omaha, but uh, not a hand that you want to get a, a whole pile of money in before the flop. You know, the the way you would and hold them. Um, the problem is kings. You know, if you're up against the, like a, some kind of rundown hand, like seven, eight, nine, ten, or something like that, then hands like that play quite well against kings. You're only going to be a marginal favourite, and uh, if you do get a lot of money in before the flop, then you're probably going to be up against the ace. And uh, of course, kings don't play very well against the aces, even in Omaha. Um, especially a hand like this, king, king, three, four. Be different if maybe you've king, king, and a, a couple of connected cards, uh, double suited. So uh, anyway, we we. Um, we call the bet from first position here. He's just doubled the big blinds. We call that one. Uh, the big blinds uh, raised it to four, which has been called as well. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with putting in the extra three dollars here to try and catch a big flop, uh, which doesn't happen. Um, we got a, a nine, five, seven flop, and uh, I think we just check pass here, which yeah seems pretty standard. Um, table four down here, ACS queen three. Uh, again, not the best hand in the world, but it's certainly worth a raise. Um, we got a jack nine six flop, all different suits. Make a continuation bet, and we get three, which is really all we're looking to do there. We don't really want any sort of action on that flop. This uh, this next hand I want to talk about. Um, well, it's a hand that we don't even play actually, just here in table two. Uh, ace three four five. Um, one small flush draw. Um, just says a bit about the. the the table selection, the uh, the hands that this guy chooses to play. A lot of people would play hands like this, um, just because it's a connected hand, kind of rundown hand. But there's a massive difference between a hand like ace three, four, five, and a slightly bigger rundown hand, even something like five, six, seven, eight, or something like that. It's much more powerful, just because um, in cash game Omaha, uh, where the stacks are relatively deep or, or even up, it's just most of the play is going to be pre-flop. Oh, sorry, sorry, most of the play is going to be post-flop. Um, so you want to play hands that are going to play well after the flop and, and have potential to make big hands on the flop and ace three four five isn't isn't really one of those hands um, you know short of flop in the absolute nuts uh, you're never going to be totally sure that all your draws are live if you, if you get into a situation where you are drawing on the flop um, you know if you if, yeah, six seven or something like that flops or a uh, yeah, some kind of straight draw and a couple of diamonds as well. You know, you, you're just not going to be sure if if you're even drawn to to a hand that's going to win the pot if you if you if you complete your draw. And obviously, that's not a really good situation to be in. So, um, well, this guy J Cage seems to be aware of that anyway, and uh, yeah, absolutely no interest in playing that sort of hand. And again, here in table one. Uh, Two, three, four, five. A rundown hand with no gaps. That's even though it's a, it, it's quite a small rundown hand. It's a, it's a hand that a lot of people would play. But um, I would agree with uh, with Jay Cage here. I, uh, I don't really like to play hands like that. Even though you are in position, it's just not a hand that that can connect all that well on a, on a on a flop. Um, you know, it really does need quite a specific flop. So uh, yeah, he's no hesitation in passing it. I think that's quite sensible. Um, Especially if you're if you're relatively new to the game, there's really not a lot of value in that hand. So um, you know, it, it might look like this guy J Cage one's quite choosy with his, uh, you know, in selecting the hands that he plays, which is why I'm kind of surprised that he, he chooses to play this hand on table one, Queen Jack six three. Um, okay, it's double suited, but um, and even though it's a short-handed game and you have position. It, I just don't think there's a lot of value in playing it. You're not going to be that happy drawing to a queen high flush or a jack high flush. Even if you do make the flush, you're not going to want to get a whole pile of money in. Or you know, it could be a situation where you're only getting called by a better hand if you if you're betting. Um, as it turns out, we get quite a quite a good flop. Um, flop the fur, a pair and a queen high flush draw. And 
since the King of Diamonds out there as well, it makes your Queen X plus draw even even stronger, I suppose. Um, could make a case for betting the flop there. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with betting the flop. You'd probably have some kind of outs even if you get called. Uh, he chases just to check the, the flop and um, check the turn as well, which, yeah, I suppose that makes a bit of sense. You don't want to get re-raised and maybe have to throw away a, a perfectly good draw. Put up a strange bet in the river here. Opponent bets 50, 50 cents. I wouldn't really know what to make of that. It could easily be a hand that's beaten us, but um, it doesn't really matter. You'd be absolutely crazy to pass for 50 cents here with with two per. Anyway, it's just because I was talking about hand selection and stuff that I, um, I just wanted to make a point about, about that hand. It, it, it's, yeah, it's certainly not a hand that I would um, that I would think there's too much value in playing. And uh, again, talking of, of hand selection, uh, again we see see this guy pass ace two four five, um, you know, for no reason in front of him. Uh, it's pretty strict hand selection actually. I, mean, I, I may actually call with a with a hand like that with the suited ace. Um, you know, if no one's raised before me, and I'm going to be first into the pot. But uh, yeah, this is quite sensible to pass as well. There's certainly nothing wrong with passing. It is a hand that can get you into a bit of trouble after the flop. Um, again, on the top of the subject of, of hand selection, this this hand here, ace king ten six. Um, even though it's the king that's suited, not the ace. I'd much rather be be, be playing this hand. Uh, yeah, this other guy passes. So we, we you know we're going to be bringing it in for a race uh, with only the button um, having position on us if he calls. And I'd rather be raising with a hand like ace king ten six than calling a raise with with jack queen six three. Uh, you know, when someone's already raised before us, uh, even though the hand is double suited, so just a bit of contradiction, I think, maybe in in, in terms of the hand selection. But there's there's nothing really wrong with that. I, I don't have, you know, a set of predetermined hands that I play or don't play. Uh, there are a lot of borderline hands that uh, that I could go either way with, and it's just really a spur of the moment decision as to as to whether or not I play them. Um, so yeah, no, nothing really wrong with passing that hand either. So next hand here, seven, eight, ten, king. Um, again, I don't understand why you would call a call a re-raise with this hand, but not play the the ace king ten uh, six hand there when you're you're bringing it in for a raise yourself. Um, but uh, personally, yeah, yeah, I would play both these, <laughs> both both hands. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with calling with this. Uh, it's re-raised here by the small blind, and um, yeah, I think it is. Good idea to take a flop with this kind of hand. Does play well against aces if that's what the guy has. And uh, we hit what what's almost a very good flop. Um, we flopped a wrap here. Uh, anything from a six to a, to a queen will, will fill us up for a straight. Uh, the problem, of course, is that the board's paired. Uh, if you can be sure that your opponent has aces and nothing else, then uh, you've got a reasonable enough draw to, to, to call here. But um, it's not out of the question. You can't be ruled out that the, the guy hasn't re-raised with a nine in his hand. People do like to re-raise with rundown hands like nine, ten, jack, queen, and stuff like that. And you could easily have a stray nine with, a, you know, even with aces or kings or something like that. Um, so it's just my boys down to a concept that I've talked about before. You don't want to be paying money to draw to a hand unless you're sure that you're going to have the best hand if if you if you hit it. Um, you can also maybe think about maybe. Uh, three betting with uh, a semi bluff here, the straight draw to fall back on, but um, I don't think that's particularly sensible. I don't think you've, uh, I don't think you're going to get the guy to pass his hand very often. Um, even if he does, you only have aces or kings rather than a run down hand. Then I imagine he'd probably still be calling with aces or kings there for what we have left. So yeah, I think it's quite sensible just to uh, just to let this hand go. Uh, which is what happens, incidentally. I think, anyway. Yeah. Okay, this is quite a nice starting hand as well over here on table four. Uh, ace, seven, eight, nine. Uh, with the suited ace. Uh, small blind raises, and uh, of course we see a flop. That's a pretty good flop for us. Uh, yeah, only a pair and a flush drop, but... Um, Against two opponents, it figures to, to play pretty well, I think, most of the time. 
wouldn't be anything wrong, I don't think, with with uh, just checking the flop there, but certainly nothing wrong with betting out either. Um, we've been called in, in two spots, and uh, we've now filled up nicely with the, the nuts. Uh, I think we choose to make a bet of around about $6 or something like that. Five and a half dollars around about half the pot. I think that's quite sensible. Um, I suppose you know if, if someone has a set, they're probably going to call a full size pot bet anyway uh, at these levels. But um, you want to give someone a chance to uh, to call with a smaller flush as well, or, or maybe even a uh, you know making that size a bet. You, there is a chance maybe your opponents could interpret that as a bit of weakness and decide to make some kind of move as well. Um, I think we've got action here from one of the players. And it turns an absolute blank. And again, we bet a little bit less than the pot here. Maybe three quarters of the pot, something like that. Um, yeah, quite a nice size of a bet as well. Gives their opponent a chance to you know, hopefully pay us off with a, a king high flush or jack high flush or something like that. Um I wasn't really expecting the, uh, the all-in for, for our opponent. Uh, that's actually a really bad play, I think, from him. Um, he's re-raising... I could understand him calling with the Jack High flush there. You know, I wouldn't necessarily say that was overly bad. But um, the reason is just a, it's just a no-no. Um, he's raising with a hand that, that only gets called uh, when it's beat. Um, you know, if we if we have we are just like firing a second bullet with a total bluff there, he's not gonna get any more out of the punt. And uh, if we do have a jack flush beat then then of course he's gonna lose the uh, the the size of the raise that he said that he puts in. Uh, table one here, quite a nice turning hand, King's double suited. Um I've said before in previous videos that uh you know, kings by themselves um aren't necessarily a, a great starting hand. Uh, you know, the king, 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 two, three, or king, king, seven, two, something like that. You know, I don't think there'd be anything wrong with passing on like that, especially if they're all offset. But there are examples of nice starting hands that contain kings and, and aces and queens and stuff like that. And you know, kings with uh, two suited connected cards, uh, of course, is well worth playing, or maybe even re raising. Uh, double paired kings, um, double suited, like we see here. That's I think that's definitely worth a definitely worth three betting with. Um, we've got a pretty good flop here as well. We've got an over pair and a flush draw. Even if our opponent has connected with with two pair or even a set, um, we still have a fair few outs against this hand. Um, another reasonably nice hand down here in table three. Yes, king eight nine double suited. Well worth the raise. Uh, up on table one here again. Um, just going to pause it a second. I was talking earlier on about passing. Small rundown hands against two, four, five, even two, three, four, five, because you need such a specific flop um, to have a big hand after the flop. Uh, this is probably the smallest rundown hand I would I would advise anyone to play three, four, five, seven, or three, four, five, six, something like that. Uh, this still does have a bit of potential to make a big hand. Um, you know, you're not not necessarily going to be drawn to the low end of the straight if you do flop some kind of wrap. So th there is a quite a big difference between a a rundown hand that's a seven high or, or eight high, and uh, a rundown hand that's that's only four high or five high or whatever. Okay, this next hand's quite interesting, I think. Um, if you look up on table table two here, uh, we're raising the button with eight nine ten, eight nine ten two three spades, and um, the small blind uh, re raises, um, big blind passes and back to us. Um, Normally, uh, even in this instance, to be honest, I, I would call with this hand, but normally I would definitely call. Um, just the kind of hand that plays well against against aces. <laughs> and if you know that you're up against aces, then it's definitely a good idea to, to take them on with a hand like this out of position. Um, the problem is I've noticed this guy uh, seems quite aggressive. Um, he's three bad pre-flop a few times. Um, and if that's the case, you know, there's... Uh, no, for a I don't, I don't think that there there are many people around these days that only ever re-raise with with the ACS. You know, m most people will re-raise with uh, with hands like rundown hands, like nine ten jack queen, uh, double paired hands, stuff like that. Especially if they're double suited. So, you know, you can't be sure that he he, he does have aces. Um, and uh, of course, while eight nine ten 
2 plays okay against the Aces, doesn't play very well at all against against some other hands that he might be re-raising with. So um, it probably wouldn't be anything wrong with passing this pre-flop, but um, to be honest, I would probably call as well, mainly because we have position. Uh, and that's what our guy Jay Cage does, he, he calls. Uh, okay, so we've got a 4, 6, 7 flop. Um you know, it's it's uh, it's kind of pretty close to the, the, the sort of flop we're looking to hit. Um, we've got uh, against dry aces. Um, that you know, if he's going to hand a gas yes, king two or something like that, say so, you know, uh, basically a hand that uh, there's nothing going for it apart from the two aces. Then we, we've got thirteen live outs uh, to win the the punt. The problem is, of course, that we you know we don't know he has the aces, and um, there's a lot of hands that, that he could have that could could have us absolutely crushed here. Um, you know, if he, if he is the sort of guy that'll re-raise with with run down hands, uh, like six, seven, eight, nine, or or eight, nine, ten, jack stuff like that. Um, you know, if he has a hand like that, maybe with a flush draw as well, we we could be in a, a position where you know rather than having thirteen outs, we might only have a few outs to, to even to just to tie the pot. You know, with him having maybe a redraw as well. So I'm not sure how good a situation this huh, this is. A lot of people would re-raise here with a with a semi bluff, but um. I don't really like semi bluff unless I think there's a good chance that it's uh, you know the bluff part of it's going to work. You know, um, you know the idea behind a semi bluff is uh, you make a bluff that you think may may make the other person pass, and if they, if they don't pass, then well you still have some much to fall back on anyway. Um, that's all well and good if you think there's a chance the other guy's going to pass, but um, I think it's probably likely that uh, if you were to re-raise here. Uh, given the given the size of the stacks, um, you know I think even if he does just have a hand against us uh, and no other part of the flop, he may decide just to cross his fingers and hope that we are drawing and uh, stick it all in and take us on, which is kind of a waste of, uh, of your hand in so in some ways. You know you have position on the guy and you can just call and see what's um, let's see what comes in the turn or, or see how he he reacts to the turn. There is a chance maybe that it could be a good card to bluff if if speed come and he checks to us. He, we could consider sticking in a small feeder bet and, and maybe winning the pot as a, with a bluff. But uh, yeah, like, like I said, if I'm making a semi blade I want, I want to, you know, I want to be confident that there's a, at least a fair chance that the guy will pass his hand. I don't want to just uh, raise with a draw with the intention of getting all the money in the pot and uh, crossing my fingers and hoping to get lucky. I think that's kind of a waste of a of a nice hand when you do that. Uh, and this is what our, our guy Jay Cage he he decides just to call anyway and see how the turn develops, um, which I think is quite sensible. Uh, but the looks of things by the, the the time he takes the call, um, it would appear that he's he's probably thinking about raising as well. But in the end, he he arrives at the same conclusion that I did that it's best just to call here with position. Uh, six on the turn, um, and this guy checks this. Now you've got to decide whether it's a good idea to bluff or sorry, let's pause this. Whether whether that's a good card for for bluffing or whether it's a good idea just to, to take a free a free river and see if we can win the pot by uh, by making the straight. Um, the problem is I think if you decide just to just to check and, and see the free river, I don't think there's any other way really you can win the pot um, without hitting the straight. Uh, I suppose maybe if a spade comes and he checks to you, it might maybe. Yeah, there might be a fair chance you can make him pass by, by bluffing. Um, but to, to be honest, I, I think probably not. Um, I know if I, if I was my opponent, even with his haste, I would consider calling if a spade, a spade come. Uh, just because I would probably expect my opponent to, to semi bluff on the flop with a, with a flush draw. What happens here is our guy Jay Cage actually decides that the, the six is a good card to, uh, to semi bluff with him. He fires out a, a $16 bet. I'm actually not mad about this play. Uh and much prefer just to take a free river and hope and hope to get lucky. Um I don't think a six is a very good card for us to bluff. Uh you know, if 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 we have if we've re raised pre flop and, and called a re raise with a hand that contains a six, then you know there's a fair chance we have that the six is connected to other cards so around about that size. And you know, if we do have a six and, and similar size cards in our hand, then you know, we're we're probably gonna raise that flop. And uh, if our opponent's uh, any sort of a decent player, then you know his thought process might be something along those lines as well. And you might think it's well, I imagine he'd think it's much more likely that we're semi-bluffing with a draw rather than 
you know, we have a six in our hand and, and just called on the flop. And uh, I now want to bet the turn. So, you know, it, you know, I would, I'd be, I'm not just saying this because I've seen the video before. But uh, if I was in this, but I, I would be thinking it's better to take the free cards and um, hope to get lucky rather than try and bluff that that turn. Because I, I would, you know, by betting that turn, I'd be fully expecting the guy to to check raises and, and stick us all in, uh, which is what happens. And um, at that stage, you've you probably forced your hand a little bit. Uh, you're getting a good price to call. Um, you know, like I said, we don't know if we're live, but I still think we're getting a good enough price to call, I suppose. And, um, we've ended up losing a lot more money in that hand than really we needed to. Uh, but it's that, that, that's uh, out of all the all the hands that uh, that I've seen in this video, that's the only hand that I would really be anyway critical of. Um, there are other hands that I may have played slightly differently, but nothing that I strongly disagree with. But uh, I, I do think that um, I, I do think that was a bad decision to to semi bluff that turn. I don't think it was a good card to to semi bluff with. Can't quite remember what the guy has. I think he does a base. Yeah, he, he says king. Rag. Um, as you can see, just you know, he yeah, uh, he obviously thinks it's much more likely that we're semi bluffing or or completely bluffing that turn rather than uh, rather than having a six. Okay, this next hand of any note is on on table two here. Uh, ace two two five. Um, suited ace. Uh, you know, we've seen earlier on in the videos that, um, to, to be honest, before I've seen this hand, I probably would have expected him to pass this hand because he passes uh, hands like ace two, uh, three five with the suited ace on the, on the button. Although, to be honest, I would probably play hands like ace, you know, ace two, three, five uh, with the suited ace on the button if no one's raised before me. And uh, I would probably raise this hand as well since, uh, you know, I'd be the one, uh, I'd be first into the pot kind of. Uh, and guaranteed position on anyone that calls. And uh, yeah, the, the, this guy Jay Case decides to to play this hand as well. Um, and maybe that's uh, maybe it gives more value to the fact that we have a pair in it and a, a suitor day, so uh, uh, the possibility of a set and, and picking up some kind of draw, as well as a, um, a slight chance of a straight draw with a you know a, a three four or something like that was the flop. Even though as I explained earlier on, it's not a great straight draw because you'd be drawn to the. Uh, the bad end of the, the straight kind of is quite interesting to sound actually the way it develops too. So yeah, four, five, six flop. Um, it's kind of almost the right size for our sort of hand, but at the same time we don't have anything. Uh, our guy Jay Cage decides to call on, on that flop. Uh, I mean, technically we only have a pair of fives and a, a gut shot straight draw, which might not be any good because um, our opponent could have a higher straight made already. Um, you know, it could be pretty much dead in that flop. But uh, I don't think I don't think that Jake Cage is calling, um, you know, with a gut shot straight draw and a uh, uh, pair of fives. I think he's kind of uh, what's known. I think he's floating the flop. Um, he just doesn't want to give the hand up yet, so he's, he's decided just to call rather than raise on a uh, on a bluff. He's decided just to call with position. The other guy has to act first on the turn. Then he can make his mind up on how to proceed uh, after the guy acts on the turn. Um, and I, I think that's quite good play actually. He bets, um, and of course now we've got a now we've got a reason to to call, especially since he's bet less than uh, the pot. I think he's better in half the pot. Um, we still have a uh, well, we may have a good shot at the bottom end. Um, although it's unlikely to be live unless unless our guys bet the flop with a with two pair or a set or, or a total bluff or something like that. But we do have a flush draw. Uh, and when, there's a good chance we could get paid if if the uh, the flush completes on the on the river because you know, there's no reason for our opponent to to expect that we'll have enough flush draw uh, since there were three different suits on the flop. Uh, you, suppose you could maybe semi bluff here if you think your opponent's weak, but I think it's a much better idea just to call now at this point. Now the board pairs in the river. I think our opponent checks this. And our guy, Jay Cage, decides it's a good card to bluff. And I think it is a good card to bluff. I actually, I really like this bluff on the river. Um, you know, we, we've called on the on the flop. Uh, there's no real draw we can have on the flop, you know. Uh, I know we don't have anything, but, you know, from opponent's point of view, there's not really a, a draw that we're supposed to have on that flop. There's no flush draw there. Uh, we should have two per or a set. 
or or a made straight. Um, and since we didn't raise on the turn, it's unlikely we haven't made straight. So yeah, it, you know, it, it is. Uh, it does make sense uh, that we have made a full house here in the river. So I, I do actually like this bet. It's a bet that makes sense. Um, people say that if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna tell a story in hand, then make make sure your story makes sense. And uh, in this case, I think it does make sense. Um, there's also a chance that our, that our opponent was completely bluffing. He was just betting that flop um, because, it, you know, since we were the raiser and he was the caller, he probably figured it was more likely to have suited him than it was to suit us. So maybe he was just completely uh, bluffing on the flop and decided to fire a second bullet in the turn. Could be that he's nothing at all. But even if he does have some kind of a hand, I think uh, it's not entirely unlikely that he, he could put us in a full house here and give it up. Um, I'm not sure what he has, of course, but uh, our, our opponent passes anyway and we're in the pot. And yeah, I do, I do actually like the way he played that hand. Okay, this next hand here in table two. Um, King still suited with a four and an eight. Uh, it's been called once and then raised on the button. And uh, our guy, J. Cage, decides to, to three bet. Um, I'm not mad about this, but I don't think there's anything too bad about it either. Um, he just didn't see this, but he actually just lost a, uh, a pot, um, the hand before this. I don't know if he's uh, maybe a little bit tilted and wants to wants to get a bit of money in this this hand because of that. But um, whether that was the case or not, I don't think there's anything too wrong with reason with King's double suited there. But uh, I'm not sure if you really need to either. You're probably going to get called and you're going to have to play the hand out of position. And... Um, you know, apart from flopping a king or uh, some kind of flush draw, um, there's not that many flops you can hit that would be really strong. Um, I'd rather have like a double paired king, uh, double paired kings, or maybe king king queen jack or jack ten or queen ten or something like that. You know, a few connected cards. That's been re-raised again. Uh, that's maybe one of the reasons why it's probably better to call with the. <laughs> With kings out of position, um, you know, if uh, I don't really know how the, how people play down at these levels, I'm not really used to them, and I, I certainly don't know how this guy's played because I, I had never played with him before. So a lot would depend on, on what I thought about the individual player, as the uh, you know, in in regards to whether I played this hand or not. Um, I mean, keeps double suit is quite a nice hand, but if you're up against the aces, it's uh, it's really not worth that much. Um, you know, you're you're really looking to hit a king or, or flop a flush draw, and there's no guarantee your flush draw is going to be live. The other guy, the other guy's got two aces. Um, could be that he's he's, he's four better with a hand like nine ten jack queen or something like that. But um, uh, like I said before, uh, uh, some kind of rundown hand like that actually plays quite well against kings. You're not going to be a big favorite, or if you do get a lot of money in here against aces, you're um, you know, you're even though you're kings that was suited, you're still in fairly bad shape. He decides to call anyway. Um, that flops. Uh, I mean, it's, it's only a good. Well, <laughs> it's it's only a reasonable flop if if we were ready ahead uh, before the flop with kings. Um, if we're up against aces, we're we're even further behind now. Uh, in fact, if if we weren't up against aces and we're we're up against some kind of rundown hand, then it's not a great flop for us because there's a good chance that he has he could have two pair or or at least a pair and some kind of straight draw on that flop. But uh, I suppose with only, you know, once you've made the decision to, to call pre-flop and uh, with only having $25 left, it's kind of hard to pass there. As it turns out, we do get it all in and we're up against the aces and, yeah, we're in bad shape. Um, I'm not mad about that play, but it's not, I wouldn't really be too critical of it either. Um, like, it's very easy to say. <laughs> Very easy for me to say now that um, it might have been a good idea just to call pre-flop or or not call the four bed pre-flop. But um, you know I've been in that position hundreds of times, like in the plenty of times that I uh, I'll get my money in in that kind of situation as well. Okay, and this next hand on on table table two here uh, again, no constructive criticism really. Just um, quite like the way he plays this hand again. Uh, he's raised with nine nine six seven. Um, uh, one suit uh, gets called in, in one spot by the, the, the pre-flop limber 
uh, AC3 flop, not much good to us apart from the possibility of the, the flush draw. But um, yeah, if you've raised pre flop, then it's, a, it's maybe not a bad idea to. That's well, probably a good idea to, to make a continuation bet on, on an ace high flop, especially since it's a bit of a semi bluff. You do have some kind of a flush draw to fall back on and, and backdoor straight outs. Um, so yeah, I like the continuation bet. Um, our opponent calls and the turns of five. Uh, he checks to us again. Uh, five is actually a great card for us. Um, if our flush draw wasn't live, then uh, sorry, it's positive. If flush draw wasn't, wasn't live, we'd, we'd get like uh, loads of additional hits. Now we get any four, any six, any seven, or any nine uh, to make a straight. Um, you could actually make a, a case for for uh, firing a second bullet there in the turn. Um, we've raised brief flop and we've bet the ace high flop. Um, a lot of the time, uh, our opponent could be calling here with just an ace on the flop. Um, you know, just peeling off the turn, peeling off one more card to see how we act in the turn. And if you know, a lot of the time, if you do show further aggression in the turn, then they're going to pass hands like, uh, you know, like a like top pair, or maybe even like a, a bad two pair. He may he may make him pass at that point. But at the same time, I do understand the the uh, the check because, like I spoke about before, I don't really like wasting nice draws, and um. You know, you, you don't really want to, uh, you know, to lose extra money in the pot that you don't have to lose. If you bet the turn there and then you get check raised and end up having to put all the money in with the draw, then maybe you feel a little bit silly at the end if you if you don't get there. Um, but still, uh, another thing I said before is that if I am semi bluffing, um, which this would be, of course, if I was to bet the turn, um, if I'm semi bluffing, I want there to be a pretty good chance that our their opponent's going to pass. And I think this this maybe is a situation where there is a, a reasonable chance that he'd be prepared to pass the sand. And um, you know, we wouldn't be just a case of, of jamming all our money in with a draw, knowing we're going to get called and, and have to get lucky. Uh, anyway, J Cage decides just to check, take the free river. Um, and no no criticisms of that really. He. Uh, we should have plenty of outs, and uh, well, he hits one of his outs on the river. Um, unfortunately, we don't know if it's uh, you know, if we have the best hand even after, even after making the flush. Um, I'd be quite happy to check that down the river for opponent checks. Uh, as it happens, he bets at ten dollars fifty. Um, I can't see how that could be a bluff. If he, you know, he has to have called with something on the flop. Uh. It's unlikely he has a straight draw. There's only one straight draw he's going to call with in a flop, and that's uh, two, four, five. And incidentally, if he does call with that, then he's just got there with the five in the turn. Um, you know, you, you would have to imagine if he's calling the flop, he, he has either an ace, uh, at least, maybe ace eight or ace three, or else an ace and a few over cards, or else a flush draw. Um, actually, possibly a fair chance of an, uh, an ace high flush draw as well, actually. Um, so I can't see, you know, if he did, if he did have two per or even just an ace and a couple of over cards on the flop, he's probably just going to be happy to to check the river. Um, I hope that you check behind, uh, maybe even check call in the river. Um, to so, you know, since we've shown weakness on the turn and haven't bet, uh, he probably think there's a good chance that even maybe even one ace or, or certain aces up was the best hand. But it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a situation uh, where we bet out um, looking for action because it's a situation where you only get called by a better hand. So I think that his bet on the river, um, you know, to me that would definitely indicate that he had a flush draw on the flop, uh, possibly with an ace as well. I, I just can't see any other hand that he would call with on the flop and uh, and bet the river. Uh, unfortunately, we're never going to find out if, uh, if that way I think I was right, because uh, J. Cage obviously agrees with me, and um, after a bit of thinking and calling time, he passes his hand as well. Um, I hope it's some consolation to him that uh, that I agree with him, and uh, I think that was a good pass. It's a little bit annoying though in, in situations like that. You can never find out whether you're right or not. Okay, the next hand is this one on on table um, three here, bottom left. Uh, king ten ten seven, uh, one suit. Um. 
kind of surprised that, you, uh, that he chooses to play this hand again, again. You know, as we were saying, talking about earlier on, it does seem a bit strange. Some of the hand selection, he, uh, you know, he, he does play a few hands that I would that I would pass and, and pass a few hands that I would play. But um, again, like I said, the, you know, a lot of hands are, are borderline, and, and um, I know what it's like myself. Sometimes I, I, I play one hand that I might, I might pass. Yeah, my pass is the exact same hand. The, the next time it comes up, um, because they are kind of borderline and could go either way, and it's uh, it's very much spur of the moment um, whether I choose to play them or not. You know, whether I choose to play a hand could be, could depend on whether I'm in a big pot on another table, uh, or whether I'm talking to someone on MSN or something like that. You know, if it you know if it is a borderline a borderline decision like that, so he, he chooses to play anyway with this this hand king king uh, sorry ten ten king seven, and. Uh, a good decision it turns out to be with a flop top set. Um, the pre flop, this guy's not actually the pre flop, he's a limb pre flop. And uh, he fires out a very quick pot size bet. The razor passes. And uh, I think it's a good idea just to try and get as much money in there as possible. Um, yeah, to, especially considering our opponent only has another 13 behind. But um, if he's got a draw, then it doesn't really matter. There's no point still playing it. If he's got a draw, you know you're going to get it all in the turn anyway. If it um, it won't make any difference. But if he's got a hand like six four or something like that, and you decide just to call and then bet the turn, uh, well, well then there's a good chance you you could lose your action if you know if a heart comes or uh, especially if it's you know a heart anyway, uh, the, the completes straight as well. So I think it's probably just best to just get all the money in while you know you're ahead here, uh, rather than. Give him a chance to get away from it on the turn, which is what happens. Um, you check raise. He does have a, a completely dead hand. Pretty much, he's only got a couple of backdoor rights, and uh, yeah, we hold up. This next hand here, table four. Um, this is a particularly good play or a particularly bad play, but I did find it a little bit surprising. Um, we raise pre-flop on the button uh, with a garbage time really, but you know I don't really mind raising any hand on the button whenever everyone else has passed. Um, we're such a, a garbage time, we we catch a, a half decent flop. Um, raise a queen jack five four, as you can see, we flop top two pair. Uh, a lot of people would would, um, as you can see, this guy's better. A lot of people would go ahead and raise here to protect their hand. Uh, I would probably raise most of the time as well, but I, I, I certainly do think it's a good idea to sometimes vary your play a bit and call the hands like this. Uh, if you raise and uh, your opponent chooses to be, sorry, pursue the pot any further, either by calling or or four betting, then um, it's going to be a situation uh, that that can't really be very good for us. You know, it'll be a situation where probably we're, we're uh, you know kind of fifty fifty pot where our opponent's drawing. Um, but if it's not, you know, if he isn't drawing, that he's going to have his beat. Even though it does seem unlikely that he has two per, and, or sorry, uh, a set on that kind of flop. You know, if a lot of money goes in, then it, it probably is a situation where he either has a set or he has a big draw. Or possibly a hand like ours, two per and a draw. You know, it, all those situations aren't really particularly good for us. Either maybe a marginal favourite or a, a big underdog, so. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think... That if, Probably more often than not, I would raise here and just try and take the pot down. And if we get called, then proceed with caution. But um, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with with, with just calling anyway. We will have position, and we can see how the hand develops, and see how our opponent backs on the on the turn. Some people maybe come, uh, call with a hand like this, and uh, maybe. Uh, you know, maybe we are given a cheap card for for a draw. Maybe our opponent has a flush draw and he ends up getting there in the turn, and maybe you feel a little bit silly. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, if 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 you do raise the flop, there's no guarantee that he's going to pass a draw anyway. Um, you you know, if he does have some kind of straight draw, flush draw, well, um, it's not it's not like you, you can stop the guy from from getting there. Uh, if he does have a strong draw, he's going to call anyway. So it's maybe not a bad idea sometimes to call with position. Um, see how he acts before you. Uh, 
Once you've called on the flop, I think it's quite sensible just to call again there on the turn. Potentially dangerous enough card. Uh, you know, if, he, if he's taking a flyer with with top pair and a flush draw or something like that, then the 10 could improve him maybe by giving him a wrap or, uh, or maybe top two pair or something like that. But probably sensible just to call down there. As it turned out with the hand the other guy had, uh, it would have worked out a lot better for us if we had it committed on the flop and got all the money in. Um, he probably would have played with the with the hand that he had and we were well ahead. So next hand here on, on table one. Um, up at the top here. Uh, four, five, six, seven. Um, uh, suited five and four. No, that's really important. But uh, it just shows you that you know you can see that Jake Cage is kind of thinking along the same lines as me, and it um, he does appreciate the difference uh, between uh, hands like four, five, six, seven, or five, six, seven, eight, and uh, a hand like two, three, four, five, or race two, four, five. Um, might not seem like a huge difference, but there really is uh, in terms of you know having a live draw on the flop. Um, it wouldn't be a great hand. It wouldn't be a hand that it. Uh, to make a point of playing every every time, but um, certainly worth calling one one bet, even though you are in a position. It is a hand that you can catch, you know, a reasonably strong flop with. Um, I do you choose to call? I can't really remember how the hand develops. Uh, well, there, there there you are. That's the kind of flop you you need. Um, we flop the wrap here, and we do have the top end of a wrap. All the cards are for the nuts. And like two, three, four, five. That that's uh, never really going to be the case. Um, unfortunately, we don't really get the the ideal turn card. But um, I suppose he, he thinks the draw is probably still alive. He has the other guy maybe on an overpair and stuff. Uh, I'd rather I might have rather seen a check raise in the turn there rather than a, a check call. Um, but uh, that's just an idea. I'm not I'm not. Uh, I'm not even 100 percent sure about it, and that kind of depends on your opponent and stuff. And uh, obviously, this guy knows more about the the opponents here than I do. There's another hand here on the uh, bottom right table, table four. Um, okay, we we flipped on a flush draw and a, an open end of straight draw. Of course, um, possibly neither end of the open end of straight draw uh, could be any good. Um, we could be drawn dead with the, the straight already. So uh, yeah, I think that's pretty sensible. Just a check call. Uh, well, check all the flop, of course, and um, yeah, probably sensible again to check check fold the turn. Uh, there are some players that, do, that just don't seem to be able to pass a uh, not flush draw for any kind of bet. But um, of course, if you have enough flush draw on the turn, then you know you you kind of want pot odds of about uh, maybe five to one to call for. Well, maybe I don't know, maybe three or, or four to one. If you think there's going to be a chance that you're going to get paid on the river. Um, but of course you're out of position there and uh, I think if the flush appears in the river and you bet out um maybe not that great a chance that you're you're, you're gonna get paid off. So yeah, it probably makes sense to pass it there. Well it definitely makes sense to pass it there, I think. Okay, well um I think I'm gonna end things here. Uh this isn't actually the end of the video, there's another twenty minutes or so left of, of, of what I've been sent anyway. And I think maybe the guy has more footage that he's gonna send in. Um Maybe more footage that I have to download. So I may use the rest of the stuff. Um, you know, I have watched the rest of this video, and there, there are quite a few more interesting hands. So um, I might be able to get another another video out of the stuff that's left. So maybe something I'll try and do over the next couple of weeks. But um, just a good, just kind of recap. Yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to, um, you know, I didn't say at the start that I wanted to maybe try and point out a few different leaks uh, that the guy had and. You know, give some constructive criticism, and um, you know, I, I have spoke about a few hands and maybe things that I would have done differently. But it, it's really hard to point out any leaks, um, so you know, I can't see anything that he consistently does that is, uh, you know, that I strongly disagree with. Um, I mentioned a few things about hand selection and stuff, but you know, they were all borderline hands. I think that you know, probably sometimes you would play them, sometimes you wouldn't, and I'd be the same. So, you know, that that wouldn't really be a criticism. Um, yeah, overall, I think yeah, I think he has a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong solid game. As I said earlier, I'm sure that he is a, a winner in these games that he plays. Well, anyway, I'm going to wrap things up for now. Um, hope you all enjoyed that, and I hope it was some news to you. Okay, good luck for now.